Hello! So, this is my first reading vlog, so welcome! Um, today's an interesting day. It is Friday, February 26th, and I should be working right now because it's still 4, it's only 4 p.m. and I'm online technically until 5, but I watched the Shadow and Bone Netflix trailer earlier today because it came out today and I'm a wreck. I'm an absolute wreck. I can't focus on anything else today. So I decided to start my reread of Shadow and Bone and the goal is to finish all of them before April 23rd when the show comes out. So I figured I would start a little bit of a reading vlog and walk you guys through this process of reliving this story, these characters, this universe, because without a shadow of a doubt, the Grishaverse is one of my top three favorite fantasy universes. So I'm just down for, to have a little bit of fun and revisit some of my favorite characters because I can't think of anything else right now. Literally head empty, only thoughts are the Darkling because I'm a hoe for the Darkling and Ben Barnes is my favorite white boy. Henry Cavill gives him a run for his money, but, but Ben Barnes beats out Henry Cavill just slightly. <laughs> So I just, I cannot wait to see these characters come to life and just re-experience all of the magic and darkness and everything in this series. So if that is your jam, if you are okay with watching someone's head explode as they go through all of the emotions, stick along. I promise I won't disappoint. So... I figured I would do a little bit of a check-in because it's almost midnight and I'm gonna go to sleep, but I didn't get a lot of footage of me actually reading Shadow and Bone because I read it and then I went to the gym and then I read it again and before I knew it, I was done. So yeah i just i forgot how quick of a read shadow and bone actually really is highly entertaining highly fast-paced super super quick i think i read it in like max two hours so i'm on ruin or sorry no i'm on siege and storm right now and i figured i would do a little bit of a check-in update everyone with where i'm at in my reread because um it went by way too quickly, honestly. So I'm just gonna go brush my teeth, go to sleep, read until I fall asleep, let's be real. Um, and I will check in with you guys at a later time. <laughs> after like 15 minutes after 8 30 and i made myself breakfast and i have siege and storm so i'm good to go for the next couple hours 
I made myself the simplest little breakfast of just like a parfait that's more granola and strawberries than it is yogurt. But I've been really enjoying this lately, so I will eat this really happily. Um, it was supposed to be a nice weather out today. So it was the plan was for me to go and like walk to my local coffee shop and like pick up like a matcha or a tea or like something caffeine filled, but there's actually snow in the forecast. And I'm a little miffed about it because I was expecting like 40 degree weather today. I was so freaking excited for it to be spring and I don't know, we just had a taste of it here in Boston the past like week or so where the weather was warmer and the sun was out and it was just really nice because I felt like seasonal depression was finally like releasing its hold. But anyway, last last week, literally, I was saying that I was really proud of myself for not using random objects shoved into my books to place a bookmark, like to use as a bookmark. What is this? I don't even know what came in this little plastic wrap. I just saw it on the floor, like under the bed somewhere, and I was way too lazy to go into the other room to pick up my bookmark. So I shoved it in to mark my page last night because I got up to chapter six. I'm still a little caffeine deficient right now, so I'm going to eat my breakfast, figure out my coffee shop situation, and if I do end up going, I'll take you guys along. But yeah, I just, I need food and I need caffeine so I will figure that out and then I will start reading again also like really quick side note does anyone else's face get really puffy after they have a melatonin the night before I couldn't sleep last night so I ended up taking a melatonin and I just feel like my face is so puffy right now I know that's such a superficial worry but I just feel puffy and like not in a bad way, like not, not in a bad way, just like I feel like a winter's coat in my face, if that makes any sense. But yeah, if you have, please let me know in the comments because I feel crazy every time I try to describe like the morning after I take a melatonin. Please let me know I'm not crazy. <laughs> So it is snowing, but they're like the big, probably wet snowflakes, and it doesn't look to be that bad, so maybe I'll go get coffee in a little bit. The dilemmas, right? Like, before, <laughs> it was, where will we go for brunch? And now it's, what will I do this morning will i go for a walk and get some coffee or will the weather stop me asta she has decided my book corner is a snack it is not a snack it is not a snack <laughs> It is now much, much later in the day. I have gotten not one, but two caffeinated beverages, and I ran a couple errands, and I am on Ruin and Rising, and I have this, this much left of the book. The book is this thick. I have that much left. Mazda, this drink isn't for you. Come here. Do you want to say hi to YouTube? Is that a no? Say hi to YouTube. <laughs> you have all of the sleepies. All of the sleepies. 
There you go. So I've made a ton of progress in my reread of the trilogy that was supposed to last a long time to tide me over until the Netflix show comes out, but I'm almost done. The Shadow and Bone trilogy. I'm just gonna have to reread Six of Crows and King of Scars in the meantime. And uh, I don't have the time to do that. There's so many other books that I should be reading instead. Anyway, so I have a lot of thoughts on this reread. So did you, did you see a little cat behind me? <laughs> anyway, I have a lot of thoughts on this reread, but I think I'm just going to save it all for a spoiler filled discussion at the end, which will probably come later tonight just because there is so little left in the book. So yeah, I will check in with you guys after I've finished. If there's one thing I learned from this, it's that I'm genuinely just really bad at reading vlogs. I binged the entire trilogy in like 24 hours and I was supposed to film kind of like my wrap up of thoughts that night, but here I am Tuesday morning filming my wrap up of my thoughts on my reread. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I have a lot of thoughts on this reread, but I'm going to give a disclaimer now because anything that I'm going to be talking about, if you haven't read the series, but you watched the trailer and you're kind of interested, click off. This section's not for you. This is going to be a spoiler filled discussion. So giving you your warning now. There's mostly three points that I want to talk about in this kind of like thought discussion. Um, the first being on Mal, the second being on Alina, and the third being on the Darkling. The one thing that I do want to say about Mal is that even in this reread, he is just as infuriating as ever with an asterisk. I liked him slightly more this time around. Yes, he's still a possessive, presumptuous asshole who takes Alina for granted until basically a new love interest kind of forms in Alina's life. However, that whole friends to lovers trope is one that I'm really fond of. I have a very soft spot for it. Just all the yearning. I, I know preteen Taz would have ate that shit up. Like, like, let's just set the stage. You're 16 again, and you're in love with your best friend. And then all of a sudden he loves you back. You tell me that you wouldn't be over the moon about that, just the same as Alina was. Like at the end of the day, does Alina deserve better than Mal? Absolutely she does. Alina deserves the world, and the world is not Mal. But unfortunately, Alina does decide that Mal is the one for her, the, that she wants to spend the rest of her life with him. Am I upset that Mal is what makes her happy? Yes, absolutely. But I will begrudgingly accept her decision. On my thoughts on Alina, however, uh, the reread was a little bit hard with the first book because Alina definitely is an N-log. And if you're not familiar with that, N-log is basically shorthand for not like other girls, like the whole kind of I'm not like other girls, but pick me sensation that's really quite anti-feminist. But that being said, while she was infuriating at the beginning of Shadow and Bone, I really liked seeing her character growth and the trajectory that her character goes throughout the entirety of the trilogy. Her self-confidence grew and both her tendencies for you know, distinguishing herself from other girls went down as well. And I think it was actually a direct correlation. The higher her self-confidence went, the less she felt the need to sort of pit herself against other girls like Genya or Zoya. Side note, fucking adore Genya. Always have, always will. Genya, oh my god, I just wish she had like her own point of view chapters or something because I know we got like that bonus material chapter at the end of Shadow and Bone but I just want more from Genya because she deserves everything. 
everything. Additionally, seeing Alina become not like best friends, but friends and allies with Zoya was really great too. My biggest complaint about this trilogy was that Zoya was really one dimensional. You know, we got her as like that preening, overly confident girl that you're, the way the story is written, you're meant to hate her especially because she sort of serves as a romantic love interest foil for Alina. But at the end of the day, no boy is worth it. All the boys are shit. You're better off just being friends. So I'm really glad that they were able to kind of overcome all of their petty differences. Of course, against the backdrop of trauma and war. But I digress. Which now brings us to my thoughts on The Darkling. <laughs> If I haven't made it abundantly clear, I'm a hoe for the Darkling. And I know that's wrong, but nor can I bring myself to care. Like the Darkling's evil. He is genuinely dangerous. Like he's charming to the point of seduction, to the point where you would do anything for him. And he's got very, very evil goals. So that's bad. But one thing I kind of didn't catch the first time around or I didn't clock in the first time I read the series was that he like genuinely caught feels for Alina in my opinion. And he was pissed about Mal to that extent, not because Alina didn't pick him, but because Alina didn't pick him. And now, now hear me out. Like I know that doesn't make any sort of sense, but I think he genuinely thought that he could bring Alina over to his side and, you know, he could charm his way into her heart and make her be kind of that willing pet of his to achieve his goals for Ravka and the world. But he didn't anticipate actually falling for her. And, and that's genuinely impression that I got in my reread of, this, of the trilogy was that he genuinely fell for her. And that doesn't make anything he did any better. That doesn't make any of the things he did any better. My God, the basically sexual assault of Alina um, when she like made out with him thinking he was Mal, but ended up being the Darkling was wrong. There was a piece of her that yearned to be with the Darkling because he never shied away from her power. While he did seek to control her power, he realized that having her be confident in that power was ultimately the best thing. And so my little heart loves him for that. The Darkling is also, and you get that with the whole storyline with his mother, he's just arrogant because he was told to be arrogant. His mother, I think, and, and not all of the blame of course falls on his mother, but she really raised him to believe that, you know, he needed to destroy anyone who didn't agree with him. And I think it's a good conversation to have about how the teachings that you learn on your parents' knees or the trauma that you experience from your parents really does shape your worldview. And while you can really try to overcome that trauma and you think that you've healed from it, at the end of the day, it, it's not something that you heal over once and done. It's a constant process. And unfortunately, the Darkling never really tried to overcome the teachings of his mother. He was just literally the most powerful creature of all time. And he really, really leaned into that. And that was his downfall. I genuinely believe that Alina would have been his perfect foil, that she would have, you know, Im that she would have been the causation of him to embrace better things. Because at the end of the day, he was just a troubled boy. There was no one that stood in his way that made him really realize how wrong he was. And I, and I saw the seeds of Alina starting to challenge that until she ultimately abandoned him, which was totally in her right. And I'm here for that. She needed to do what was right for her and for the country. And she became a hero in her own right. But the Darkling never got that chance. Also on a much more basic level, I am just such a hoe for tortured dark demon boys. And then 
Ben Barnes got cast as the Darkling slash General Kerrigan and I was just gone. Like there was no, like it was over for me. But yeah, that that's kind of it on my thoughts. I've really already talked about how the Grishaverse is one of my all time favorite fantasy universes. The magic system is also so compelling. At its face, it's really quite simple because the way that the magic system works in the Grishaverse is that, you know, these the magic that the Grisha use is just an extension of the four elements or of like elemental magic. And it, you can con conceptualize that, but there are such intricacies and, and the order of this, of like the order of small science, I think it is. It's such a seamless blending of magic and science in my opinion. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just so entertaining to be in this world and I'm so glad that the story of Nikolai continues because of course one of my, especially the first time around, before King of Scars had been released, I genuinely was so upset that Nikolai was introduced and then literally just taken away when he got transformed into like the Volker or like the monster or whatever because I was just like that's such a convenient way of getting him out of the picture and I was mad about it because I wanted more Nikolai but on this reread like during this reread of course in the back of my head I was just like oh like that's fine I'll just pick up King of Scars if I miss Nikolai too much so definitely less annoyed about that this time around and yeah I <sighs> I'm really glad I did reread this trilogy, but I just feel a reread of Six of Crows and King of Scars brewing and I'm kind of upset about it because I have so many other books to be reading instead. Not that there's anything wrong with rereads, like that's not what I'm implying at all. I just, there are books that I need to be prioritizing and I know, and I know that reading is just a hobby and like you can do whatever you want, but I want to also be reading other books, so. That's kind of where I'm at. We'll see where my March reading takes me. So yeah, those are my very jumbled thoughts on Shadow and Bone. I wish I had been more coherent about it, but anytime I just stop to think about the books or the upcoming show, my mind literally just short circuits and I like over and over a flashing message of the Darkling slash General Kerrigan just pulses in my brain. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and joining me and being a part of my reread of this series. I hope you were able to get some laughs out of it, maybe enjoyed a little bit of the cat content, and I also hope that you guys are having a lovely morning or evening or afternoon or night, just whenever you're watching this, I hope you're having a swell time. So yeah, that's it for me. I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.